that year, and they developed the vaccine to reflect that. Sometimes they hit the nail on the head, sometimes they miss it a little bit, um, and that varies. But at the bottom line, even on bad years of vaccine effectiveness, it still is beneficial. So we still want people to get, to get vaccinated. We won't know until farther down as the season progresses of what the stats are this year. But even if it is not the best year, there still is a beneficial effect. Doc, we're going to take a call, if you don't mind. Line one, talk to Pat and Slidell. What's going on, Pat? Hey, uh, I appreciate you taking my call, Sheriff. Uh, the, uh, the question I got, I'd like to answer the doctor, is that uh, I've been seeing this for quite a while, but uh, when, especially, I don't know about the other churches, but when the shaking hands and you're seeing people coughing and blowing their nose in this uh, time of the season, and the shaking hands, uh, I think we were requested, um, sent a letter asking the church um, if they would eliminate it for, uh, temporarily, but uh, no response. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Yeah, you know, the personal contact is a, is a big way that the uh, flu gets spread. Um, I, I think it's a good idea to, to limit the contact. Another way that, that folks can mitigate that is just by taking some hand sanitizer with them where they go. And that's also a great suggestion when they go to the parade this season. You know, a lot of folks are going to be together in small places. Take some hand sanitizer with you. Use it when you're on the parade. Doc, right um... How is Mardi Gras going to influence this? I mean, are there some concerns there? The concern is that anytime you get a lot of people together in closed spaces, you just increase the risk for transmission. So, you know, we're kind of getting a double whammy because the cold weather last week didn't help us very much in terms of flu, and now we got a bunch of crowds coming in. Um, so I do think people need to take heed of that. They need to be extra careful to you know, do the things um, like pat that just to cover your mouth and you cough. Um, be conscientious about personal contact and also bring some hand sanitizer out there. You know, and I was just looking at some other stats, which is incredibly alarming. At Our Lady of the Lake in, in Baton Rouge, in December 2016, they had 98 people test positive for the flu. Last month in 2017, they had 1,300. <laughs> and 13 patients had died due to the flu three of them in their 30s or late 20s. And it, it just uh, you know, drives the point home that a lot of these younger folks are really getting significantly impacted by these different strains of the influenza. Yeah, no question. This is hitting us hard, and it's hitting you know, a lot of different age demographics, uh, the kids as well. In previous years, I think a lot of you know, young, healthy folks opted out of getting the flu vaccine because they were young and healthy. And this year has taught us that that's not best practice. We really need to be vaccinating everyone. So how do you get to the point where you get over the edge and you begin to get on the, on, on the downside of this? What actually, you know, in the, in the cycle, what causes that? I think it typically just runs up course. It's, it's